International Civil Aviation Regulation most time compels aircraft rescue and firefighting operations at all airports that serve scheduled passenger air carriers. These are the only civilian fire protection services that are specifically regulated by any government. It's also a special category of firefighting that involves the response, evacuation and possible rescue of passengers and crew of an aircraft involved in a typical airport ground emergency. The ARFF and their activities is our major interest on the show. Plus, the famous Changi Airport in Singapore gets a massive indoor waterfall. It's Aviation This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Okitumbi, and you're most welcome. Let's get underway. <music> The aviation industry is an important contributor towards economic development. It has not only increased world trade activity by enabling faster and easier movement of passengers and goods, but also provided jobs to millions of people. Airports may have regulatory oversight by an arm of their individual national governments or voluntarily under standards of the International Civil Aviation Organization. Activities in the airports are being guided by rules and regulations. You are exposed to the job. Beside the preliminary training, we we'll give you preliminary training, or uh, you attend courses, then uh, you do orientations, then there is a layout. You, you don't work in the airport without manuals. So you have to acquaint yourself with all those things before you can operate in the airport. Aircraft rescue and firefighting is a special category of firefighting that involves the response, hazard mitigation, evacuation and possible rescue of passengers and crew of an aircraft involved in a typical airport ground emergency. Basically, we are here for aircraft emergencies. The airport is categorized into CAT 9 and by CAT 9 there are certain requirements that is revolved. We are supposed to have by standard three major vehicles, but I can bet you right now we have about six major vehicles. We have about four stations here. In my substation, I have another vehicle there. And each of these vehicles carry different capacities of water as required. We attend to structural firefighting as well. We are also responsible for the structures like the terminal building. We have had several cases of fire incidents here, and we're able to manage this, intervene and manage it successfully. The principles of safety and security, including fire coverage or protection, is critical at any airport. Fire coverage is classified from 1 to 10 and response to fire requires speed. It is called response time. The response time is 2 minutes, not less than 3 minutes. Under 2 minutes should be there. That is in each movement area. The movement area is the runway, the apron, all areas where the aircraft are moved. It borders about training, equipment and the speed at which we deploy this equipment to use. Then, here we operate from two stations. Apart from these two main stations, we have fire prevention unit in each of the terminal building headed for fire prevention officers who are licensed to do what they do, to carry out risk assessment of all the facilities, the terminal buildings and other infrastructures in the airport. Recent airport fire incidences include the VIP lounge of the Sam Umbakwe Airport in Imo State. The severe damage of a turboprop aircraft belonging to Overland Airways while undergoing service at the airline's hangar in Lagos. And an Arik Air aircraft also had smoke detected in its cabin on a Lagos aircraft flight in March 2018, which forced the pilot to declare an emergency 81 nautical miles to the Accra airport. While officials of the airport's authorities say they are prepared for this kind of emergencies, an airline boss begs to disagree. We know that all these things exist on paper. Like I'm sure if I go to FAN today, they'll pull out documents showing every airport in the country. The fire cover of the airport was uh, category 6, category 7, 8, 9, the number of bowsers they should have. But we have to go back and check. Do those bowsers work? Do they have the proper form? Do they have the right things? Do they have, if, it's, if it's water, do they have water available? I think it's something we need to look at. It's really worrying. 
ensuring that aircraft passengers at the terminal are safe also rests on the continuous training of firemen. The international regulation says every two years you go for a freshers course and we just have to abide it. It's an international record, um, regulated industry. If you don't do what the international body says, which also the NCA applies, then definitely you are contravening whatever com uh, requirements they have. With the federal government's latest inspection of a 5 billion Naira fire training simulator expected to be installed at the Nigerian College of Aviation Technology, many Nigerians hope that this upgrade in training will impact on the quality of service delivery of aircraft rescue and firefighting personnel. Thank you.